Hi and welcome to the channel Newtown Naughty Boy once again and in this video we'll be talking about the Crossman Model 600. Now I envisage that actually I'll probably produce two videos uh, for this particular air pistol. Um, one will talk about the actual pistol itself and we'll examine the pros and cons of this pistol and a part two um, I envisage that maybe I'll do some chrono testing and um, we'll actually demonstrate the air pistol outside in my garden to show you how that this particular pistol operates but first um, if you bear with me I'd like to tell you um, a little story about this particular air pistol um, which relates back to my history in some way and um, if you come back in time to the late 60s when um, I was getting well into air pistols and air rifles I was about 14 years old and back then in the United Kingdom really the only air rifles and air pistols that are available were those that were produced by BSA Webley and Diana. They were the main ones and during that time of course there was no internet, there wasn't much coverage really of what was available. There weren't even many shops to go and look at air rifles and air pistols. It was very very difficult to obtain things and most of what I bought was through the second hand market through the newspaper through advertisements and swapping with my friends as well um, in some respects it was a little bit of a frustrating time but um, something happened uh, during that time I managed to find an advert uh, in a shotgun magazine for a book and it's this book that we're looking at uh, right now so um, if I zoom out you'll see the title so I bought this um, in the late 60s air guns and air pistols new and enlarged edition by Al Wesley now until I actually obtained this book and I was very very excited when it came through my post box about a week after ordering it um, I was very excited and I've read this book cover to cover many many times um, but what I found was of course was that there were many many more air pistols and air rifles available um, and it made me think that well why can't we obtain these different types of air pistol and air rifle in the UK and it started me thinking especially when I started to read up on what these uh, or the construction of these air pistols and air rifles and particularly the air pistols the CO2 air pistols they were the ones that really kind of mesmerized me and made me think well these are so different to what we have in the UK this is something that I'd really like to own myself so after reading this book as I said many times and looking at these pictures many many times um, I tried to find a gunsmith in the UK that would sell me one of these pistols so I contacted someone by letter and they wrote back to me and said yes if I wanted one of these CO2 pistols then I could have one but I would need a firearm certificate to own one and that's where my dream bubble burst because of course I was just a youngster uh, I had no firearm certificate at all and that was going to be the only way then that I was going to own one of these air pistols so out of 
all of the pictures and all of the different air pistols that I saw in this book of course and it was the 600 the Crossman .22600 that I favoured the most this is the air pistol that I wanted um, and I couldn't obtain and so of course I put this book away um, I grew up I guess after a while and other things started to take over like drinking and girls and all sorts of other things that happen and this book was put away for many many years and eventually when I got back into shooting much much later in life and I was sorting through the loft one day I came across this book and I just wondered um, about these CO2 air pistols because things had changed in the UK and I knew this because uh, paintball had come along and CO2 um, um, was being used in, uh, in, in paintball and uh, also in airsoft um, guns as well so as I thumbed through the book once again in my um, in my late 50s um, I came across the picture of course of the 600 and I thought well I wonder if these are, are available I wonder if I could actually purchase one of these second hand and guess what yes I actually found one so after many many years I actually managed to find one to buy and of course it was second hand and um, I'm going to show it to you now and we'll have a look at the air pistol and go over a little bit of the history of the Crossman 600. So here we are, my 600, my Crossman 600 that I bought um, probably about four years now and um, what a beast it is. It's actually much much more of an air pistol, um, a fantastic air pistol than I could have ever dreamed. In fact once I obtained this air pistol and tested it out and um, and saw how it worked I was actually absolutely stunned by how this masterpiece works because it is a masterpiece within the air pistol um, kind of uh, fraternity if you like um, and to think way way back when I was a child that th these were being produced and they were incredibly far superior to anything that was on the market um, at that time um, and I couldn't have obviously obtained one but thinking back to, to what we were actually um, playing with in, 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 the, in the fields then in the late 60s this, was, this would have been an incredible almost a futuristic type of air pistol then um, and still is to a certain extent this is really con uh, considered to be a true classic of all other CO2 air pistols that have been made over the time. There really, really isn't anything to compare this pistol with. So the Crossman 600 was first uh, sold in the United States in 1960 and it um, it had a 10 year lifespan um, from 1960 obviously to 1970. It started its design in 1955, yes, that's right. It took five years to actually design this air pistol. Um, and it took some of the best um, engineers within Crossman to actually think about how they were gonna produce something like this because unlike anything else at that time and, and probably to a certain extent even today um, this is a true semi-automatic air pistol that uses actually actual air gun pellets it doesn't actually use um, BB shot it actually uses air gun pellets and it will hold a magazine of 10 and it will fire them off as fast as you can actually pull the trigger so this is a true semi-automatic air pistol. So as I've just mentioned, the uh, 
the air pistol was made from 1960 to 1970 um, to try to understand where this particular um, model fits into that 10 year span um, one has to look at the actual loading uh, cap at the front of the pistol and this particular one has um, the piercing pin in the front here and there's a push button to pierce once the cap is screwed into the gun this plunger then is activa activates the actual gas power lit inside the pistol and these came into vogue um, between 1966 and 1970 so it's a little bit later on in the 10 year history I guess of these guns being manufactured before this type of cap was used then the early versions 1960 to 64 just used um, an end cap piercing um, cap that just screwed in here and as you screwed it in actually pierced the actual gas thereafter thereafter 64 um, another variant was the actual piercing pin was actually inside the body or incorporated at least into the firing valve inside here so you actually inserted the gas uh, neck down instead of neck up and then screwed in a cap here to ensure that the gas was pushed into the pin uh, somewhere around about here and then that made the seal as the cap was screwed in and that that was it you were ready to go so kind of three different variants there or at least three different variants with the cap as an identifier there was I understand um, a nickel plated version or variant um, which is quite sought after and of course there is a 177 version of this gun which is called the Plinkomatic and that was made from 1961 so as you can actually see this gun is actually in quite good condition um, I think it's been looked after it obviously uh, was imported from the States at some point um, its paintwork is pretty good it's like a bluey a light well I say a, a bluey bluey grey colour on the metalwork and these quite nice mottled brown um, hand grips here uh, are all good there's no chips in these and it looks pretty pretty good as if it's been well looked after so let's have a look at some of the detail on this gun so the magazine is a spring-loaded um, affair up the top here with this lever being pulled back initially and latched at the back to keep it open and then you can actually place your pellets in here in this slot allowing them to run backwards um, by tilting the gun up like that and placing 10 pellets in and letting them slide down and then once you've got your 10 pellets in then you can slide the pin back and put pressure on the pellets so that the pellets are actually always being pushed in this direction towards or into this loading shuttle here so as we look at the gun from the top how the actual gun works is that it is a complete cycled blowback system so the co2 actually not only propels the pellet out of the barrel but it also actually um, takes care of the loading as well of the next pellet this shuttle here moves out to register another pellet from the magazine and then slides back 
and inserts or at least aligns it with the barrel here so that the next shot can be taken and this operation of this shuttle moving sideways to grab the next pellet and align back to the barrel is so fast even with uh, normal photography you wouldn't actually see the movement of this shuttle at all it's so fast um, and the operation is very very successful in most cases but what I found is that the type of pellet that you use in the magazine is is quite crucial so the ones that I use are flatheads or flatheaded uh, pellets Diablo pellets because they don't tend to then um, mess with each other as they're stacked end on end within the magazine if you use normal round dome pellets uh, what you find is that um, they start to ruck up in the magazine and actually sometimes you get a misfire and they actually don't follow down this shaft into the loading shuttle here very well so that's my recommendation if you have one of these pellets just use the flathead pellets or uh, a particular type of flathead pellet that will give you the best operation for this magazine but basically as I've said um, you load this up with 10 pellets you can fire this off as fast as you can pull the trigger and it really really will whack these out with a quite a loud crack as well um, probably the loudest crack I've heard from a co2 gun and the velocity of these well about 350 feet per second is the quoted um, velocity but in the part two what I'll do is we'll set the chronograph off and uh, we'll do some tests to see actually um, how this gun performs against those figures what I found is that I can actually uh, use about four magazines uh, be before the actual CO2 runs out so I can fire about 40 shots off uh, with this pistol and bearing in mind that some of the gas is being used uh, for the blowback system to load the pellets in so that's pretty good so once you've loaded your pellets into the magazine you then cock the hammer back you have to cock the hammer back initially and you'll see that as I have pulled that hammer back the shuttle has actually come out here a slid out to accept the first pellet and when the gun is fired that shuttle will move back very very quickly and the gun will fire the pellet out of the barrel and then this shuttle will come back for the next pellet so one of the issues with the gun or one of the uh, safety issues if you like with this gun is after it's fired its tenth shot the gun is still cocked it doesn't actually decock itself automatically this hammer will be back ready to fire another pellet even though there is no pellet left to accept but it's an important aspect to actually note here that after you've taken your last shot really you need to hold the hammer back and pull the trigger to release it now the gun's safe of course there is a safety catch here as well that you can engage so it's more of a switch and it comes into play I think let's just pull the hammer back again yes that hammer la that safety latch there will only operate if the bolt is back and the gun is ready to fire and I can't pull the trigger there to fire a shot just to show you the uh, end the back side here um, it's a, a square notch it is adjustable you can move the um, let me get that back into focus for you if I can so 
yes so it's a square notch here and it's adjustable with some screws at the side and also there's a screw for um, elevation here as well and just at the end here of course you've got your simple um, blade uh, foresight here so that really does sum up uh, what the Crossman 600 is all about and um, as I said I will produce a part 2 soon um, which will see us test the pistol out on the chronograph first and then we'll do some shooting outside um, at a target to see what its accuracy is like um, just a, wor a, a word of warning though if you do again if you do managed to obtain one of these guns and they are pretty expensive because they are really really sought after um, especially if you find one that's still in its original box um, they really really do go for a pretty price um, but a word of warning really is the safety issue here this is a semi-automatic air pistol it is very easy um, to um, to make a mistake if you're not aware of how the magazine system works because uh, once you get down to the end of the magazine you're not always sure whether there's a pellet inside um, the shuttle or not it's very very difficult there is a little um, viewing gap there which I think is designed just to show you if there may be a pellet um, actually in the shuttle or not but be aware of that always make sure um, if you finish shooting that this uh, hammer is actually uh, in its safe position and always keep the pistol pointing down when you do that as well because these are quite powerful really and they can do a lot of damage um, uh, to anybody so that's really all I was going to say I think today and um, I hope that you find the next video uh, of using this pistol interesting as, as well um, if you've liked what I've said today about the Crossman 600 then please uh, like this video pass any comments on to me um, about this pistol you may own one or you may have some more information about this pistol that'd be great let's let's uh, put some comments in the in the uh, uh, comments section on YouTube and um, just fill in maybe some of the bits that I may have missed out so that's it from me I'll see you on the part two which I hope won't take too long for me to actually produce so bye for now well if you've ever wondered where the name Newtown Naughty Boy comes from well you can learn a little bit more about that um, I did write a book last year and uh, quite recently I've had the book republished um, it's got a nice new cover on it it details uh, my story really uh, growing up uh, in the UK in a small town and uh, all the things that I got up to uh, during the 50s 60s and 70s there's quite a bit in there there's some pictures there's illustrations there's a little bit of naughtiness there's quite a bit of air gun shooting and shenanigans there's stuff that will make you laugh in this book it's a book you can order from Amazon but also it's available on Kindle quite cheaply so why not give it a go it's a really good read and then you can give me some feedback on it um, hope you enjoy give it a try